Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter, but not the spirit of a request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Freelance game with contract place turns bizarre, as rubber stamps and illegible handwriting become strategies for dealing with outdated paperwork. The second story. Denied bilingual bonus. Employees' clever compliance turns the tables on their boss, landing a higher position and teaching a lesson in respect. The third story. Stopped working Tuesdays. Employer insists. Being sole specialist, profits drop, customers leave. Gave notice on a Tuesday, leaving same day. The first story is... Paperwork must be filled out by hand? How about by foot? In my industry of freelance workers, there's a company whose service is handling contracts. Sounds like a productive place, but it's not. Being generous, they're 75% useless, and they peeve off every one of us. One guy walking away from the window once said, now I know why they're behind bulletproof glass. Every year they require us to fill out an I-9 form for employment eligibility in the US, even though for every freelance job we take, we have to fill out a new one. Many of us have told our new employer that the contract place has it on file, but that won't do. At least one employer met that statement by asking what contract place is. They even have a sign that says we'd still be asked and therefore required to fill out a new one by an employer. If you're still wondering how useless contract place is, so I started messing with them. One year I decided to use a rubber stamp with my address on it to fill out the form at contract place. I used this on the same form for every new job as well as all the other paperwork that requires my annoying to write 20 times address. It's never been a problem because well, you can read it. While driving home, the contract place calls me. Sir, this rubber stamp won't do. You need to come back and fill it out by hand. I say no problem, but just keep driving home. Problem solved for that year. The next year I'm there for some other 25% stuff and looks like it's time for a new I-9. And I use the stamp. She looks at it and says, hold on a second. She's gone for a minute and I know she's asking if it's legit. Nope. Sir, this rubber stamp is not acceptable. This one will have to be destroyed and you'll have to fill out a new one. I thought it odd that she informed me of the fate of the bad document as if I should feel sorry for it or something. Kind of a psycho move if you ask me because you can smoke it for all I care. MC time. I'm handed a blank one through the bulletproof glass slot and said here's the thing. I have nerve damage in my hand, so it won't look very neat. She said it was okay. I didn't have nerve damage, but I was testing to see what she would say. Would they take pity on my condition and offer the rubber stamp one? What if the handwriting was too messy? Let's find out. I say, okay. I'm left-handed, so I start writing with my right hand. I figured if I was a righty trying with my left, it would be obvious that I was faking. But everyone's right-handed, right? Sarcasm. So I legit try writing my annoying to write address as clearly as I can, but it's bad. Real bad. It was utterly illegible, even to me, and I just wrote it and knew what it was supposed to say. It looks like I used my feet. I apologize with sincerity as I hand it over because I did actually think it would be clearer. I expected her to say, you know what? I think this stamped one is okay. Nope, she accepted the chicken scratched one looked at it and said, that's good, or that's what we need, or something like that. I remember exactly what I said about accepting such a document, and that's how the terrorists win and walked away. Ultimately, they probably were afraid of discrimination against the disabled if they rejected it. I got that document in there as the last one before it all went digital. For some reason, the digital ones are good forever or something because we don't need to fill that out yearly anymore. The second story is, you won't pay me for being bilingual. So which language should I work in? This happened back in the late 1990s. I had worked for the government at the lowest paid position for five years. Due to the high unemployment and fluctuation of workloads, I would be temporarily promoted to three or even four positions above my base position for between three to eight months at a time. I was very lucky because when the layoffs came every year, I was always their cutoff and managed to stay employed without a break in service during this time. I am bilingual and so every person I interacted with would be spoken to in the language they started talking to me in. There were two ladies in our HR who had an argument over which was my mother tongue. They called me into HR and asked me if I was French or English. I told them it didn't matter, I was completely bilingual. They insisted that I choose one based on my early schooling, which was done in English. I was then sent on language testing for French, which I passed to their satisfaction. 
Suddenly, I had a slightly bigger paycheck than I had anticipated, and was told that I was eligible for the bilingual bonus, as I worked on files and dealt with people in both languages. During my entire tenure, I worked in both English and French. The perk amounted to about $32 every two weeks, so not really a huge bonus, but enough to get an extra case of beer. Fast forward six years, I was transferred to a much larger office in lieu of being laid off, but at my base salary. My immediate supervisor was one level higher than I was, but she was drunk with her perceived power. I met her on my first day, and it was quite bizarre. She stomped into our work area. There were three others plus me, hopped up on a table, and stood there yelling at the top of her voice, Get over here! Come on! Hurry up! When the four of us were in front of her looking up, she began wagging her finger at each of us in turn like we were naughty kids at daycare, yelling that there were forms that needed to be completed and sent to certain places, and that we had to do it properly or there would be hell to pay, etc., and so on. When she stopped yelling to breathe, I calmly put my hand up and asked her, are these new procedures or are you angry that they haven't been done properly? Remember this was my first day and I had never even met her. I was not going to be chastised for something that I wasn't even there for. She glared at me infuriated that I would ask a question in one of her meetings, and she began to berate me. I tuned her out and sat waiting for the meeting to be over. I knew this was a bad job situation, so I kept my mouth shut and took notes. About six weeks into this childishly stupid situation, I received my paycheck and I was short almost $100. I looked over it very carefully and discovered that not only was I not being paid my bilingual bonus, but they were clawing back the bilingual bonus I had received the two paychecks before. I approached my supervisor to ask why this had happened. She said, little people like you at your level don't qualify for a bilingual bonus, so tough. Now get back to work or I'll write you up. I made an appointment to speak with her supervisor who was two levels above her. He said, I don't have time for these petty arguments. What the hell are you complaining about? You get free parking. Yes, he swore first. I shouted at him rather rudely, what the F does free parking have to do with this? I don't own an effing car. I was furious, not only because I had been denied my bilingual bonus, but that they did not consider me to be worth speaking with. Their attitude made it quite clear that they believed that they were the top dogs in the hierarchy, and I was less than a peon. Cue malicious compliance. I walked into my boss's office first thing the next morning, and I do absolutely no work until she arrives. She tells me to get to work. I told her that I needed to know which language I was supposed to work in. She says it doesn't matter, I can work in both. I insist on seeing, in writing, my language of work. It takes her 20 minutes to find the right paperwork, but finally she stabs her finger down on a piece of paper and goes, There, you're in an English-only position. Now get out of here and get to work. I calmly walk back to my workstation and I work all day long, but when I see a form I'm supposed to stamp and file in French, I simply place it in a growing pile on my desk. I work 9.5 hours a day, so that I could leave early on Thursdays and have Fridays off. At the end of my day, I clean and lock up my work area and head into her office with a pile of papers that was just under a meter in height. I drop my load on her desk and some of it falls over onto her work. She's peeved. What the hell is this? I smiled as I calmly said, it's all your French SH, and I turned and left for the day. The entire office could hear her cursing at me and screaming for me to get back there and clean it up. I laughed quietly to myself as I stood waiting for my bus, planning on enjoying my long weekend. The next day, Friday, my friend called and told me that she was furious and was going from crying to yelling just sitting there. Monday morning I show up at work and am greeted by her boss. He told me that I had a bad attitude, and that he was going to lay me off because there were cutbacks coming, and that he was going to give me two weeks to notice when the budget was finalized. I was not surprised, so I spent the morning looking for other opportunities and positions to apply for. I didn't do a single bit of work, and my boss never poked her head out of her office. Later that afternoon, I received a call from HR and I'm thinking, crap, here it comes. But instead, I'm told that the competition for a position that I had applied for was completed. And because I had landed in the top 10 of the English position, and in second position in the French position, I had the choice which office I wanted to work in. I was very happy because I could choose to work at my old office with all my friends. I danced around the office a little and no one could miss the absolute joy on my face. I spent the next two weeks doing absolutely nothing, and my boss just ignored it because... Bonus! The position I took was two levels higher than my supervisor's boss, and he was required to ask for my permissions to change anything in his office. My former supervisor was demoted because of my complaints to the union, and she lost her bilingual bonus. 
I started in the mailroom and learned so much about the organization that I was able to be placed anywhere and work effectively. I had a degree and certificate in two polar opposite fields of study before I started working here. Just because someone is working for minimum wage, it doesn't mean that they're stupid and you can treat them like crap. Because you never know, they may just be your boss one day. Although I was very upset at the way I had been treated, I never used my position to be punitive to them. I could have easily done so without any suspicion, but nah, they needed to learn how a boss should treat their staff, not be subjected to abuse. The third story is, Tuesdays, what Tuesdays? I, a 32 male, work as a repair technician for a retail store that repairs automotive and devices. I do the occasional sales as part of my job, but there's always been a need for someone to do repairs on a daily basis. I was hired for full-time work which they begged me not to quit, due to a bad company culture. There were a lot of red flags but I needed a job so I stayed. I ended up taking the majority of the workloads in various areas in the retail store and doing majority of the device repairs that came in. Occasionally I'd work on some trucks, SUVs or cars that would come in for diagnostics and maintenance repairs. Then help customers pick and choose what they wanted or needed for their automotive and devices. Open and close the store alone while handling the registers with deposits. It's a decent job but there are no benefits, hardly any breaks and meager pay. So for the past several months, corporate and management haven't trained anyone to fill in for my position in case something comes up. Well, I hurt myself on the job when doing inspections, and they refused to give or provide me the means to file workers' compensation. Prior before that, they kept sending me home over COVID-related concerns, or when the business slowed down for the day. Issue is that I'm medically diagnosed with asthma, and trying to breathe is hard when you have an asthma attack. I have a medication, but it only does so much. I guess they're afraid of asthma. So when I inquired about workers' compensation and explained my situation, they began radio silence. No one would provide me the documentation or allow me to report my injury. So rolling into the following week, they quietly scheduled me off from Tuesday without saying anything. When I discovered what happened, I asked, why is my schedule so different? We figured you wanted Tuesday off, so you'll no longer be allowed to work on Tuesday ever again. I replied, shouldn't you have discussed with me first about this? Manager and corporate replied, we don't need to discuss this any further. I replied, well, okay then. Two months into this issue, I have been getting calls and texts to come in because people have been calling out or not showing up due to illnesses and the bad weather. Hi, I know this may be an inconvenience, but can you come in this Tuesday? We don't have a technician available to cover. I replied, I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to work on Tuesdays. A week later, I get a call. I need someone to come in to open this Tuesday. Can you open? I responded, I'm terribly sorry, but you said it yourself along with corporate that I'm never allowed to work on Tuesdays again. This goes on repeat many times and I give them the same response. And guess what? They lost a lot of sales. Because turns out I'm on the top leaderboard for sales on Tuesday. I come in a few days later and ask what happened. It was insane. We had so many people come in for repair orders and no one was able to do repairs. We lost a lot of revenue and important clients. I gave them a smug look and smile. Well, I no longer work on Tuesdays. Due to no longer working on Tuesdays, I managed to find a new job on my free time that pays me twice as much and gave them my two weeks notice on Tuesday, of course. And guess what? I'm quitting on Tuesday. So now my corporate and manager is rushing to train people to do the work that I do. I'm absolutely enjoying this because the sheer panic as they try to find someone to replace me. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.